Hi, my name is Richard Vaudry, and welcome to Byte 5 of Melbourne Symphony Orchestra's Beethoven Bites. Today, we're going to learn about conductors and discover exactly what a conductor does. Then we'll discover why it makes complete sense that our genius Beethoven was not only a composer, but a conductor also. Loosen those arms, let's conduct along. Meet Ben, or as he's properly known, Maestro Benjamin Northey, conductor of the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. Let's discover exactly what it is the conductor does. After all, he's the only musician that doesn't make a sound during the performance. Let's see what Ben needs to do his job. He has a pretty simple toolkit. First up, a baton. No, it's not quite a magic wand, but it can inspire magical sounds. Its purpose is to make little movements of the hand appear bigger so all the musicians can see clearly. Secondly, a podium. This is simply a platform for the conductor to stand upon, so again the musicians can clearly see him. The shiny rail is to stop him falling backwards off the stage. Lastly, a score. This is a large book containing every note that every instrument plays in the piece. We're talking thousands of musical notes. A good conductor knows every one of these notes and how he wants them to sound. Conductors spend a lot of time studying the score, weeks, months, sometimes even years before the first rehearsal. They know the score so well that often they memorize the whole piece. Normally, if we were sitting in the audience, we'd see the back of the conductor. But here's what the orchestra sees. Ben conducting with his baton, podium and score. There's one more thing a composer uses, and perhaps it's the most important tool he has. It's something called gesture. Gesture simply means a physical movement which conveys meaning. You've probably used some gestures today already, especially when mum told you to clean your room. A conductor uses physical gestures to show the orchestra all the things we've talked about in previous bites. Emotion, rhythm, and even orchestration. This is why the conductor is so important, even though he doesn't make a sound. In fact, Many describe conducting as the art of gesture. In other words, how well can the conductor direct the musicians with physical movements only? What's Maestro Ben gesturing here?
He started out looking so happy and then got mad. And was he gesturing beats as well? And pointing at particular instruments? That's right, he was doing all of these things. Let's explore each of the conductor's gestures. If you remember in bite three, we talked about beats or pulses in the bar. One of a conductor's jobs is to show the musicians what speed to play. This is known as tempo. By indicating each beat of the bar, the musicians can visually see what speed to play. Here's the special pattern the conductor uses for our common group of four beats. Here it is nice and slow so we can see. Down with a bounce, cross the body, out the other side and up. Here it is again, this time up to speed or at tempo. One, two, three, four. Now you know how to conduct beats in a bar. Let's learn what else you might need to become a great conductor. What do Ben and Beethoven have in common? Their names both start with B and they're both conductors? Correct. But more seriously, they both understand the emotions in the music. Let me prove it. Ben, Beethoven. Ben, Beethoven. Ben, Beethoven. It's the job of a conductor to show the orchestra the emotion the composer wanted in his music. And if you remember from our first bite, Beethoven had a lot of different emotions in his music. Can you see how many different emotions Maestro Ben's face and gestures portray? What an emotional journey. Must be exhausting being a conductor. <sighs> the final job of a conductor we're going to explore today is to do with orchestration. Remember back in bite two, we discovered composers used particular instruments and timbres to express emotion. Well, the conductor helps the musicians understand which part on which instrument is most important at any moment. If Ben wants more or less from an instrument, he gestures to them. The musicians then know when it's their turn to play out or to politely hide. This is called dynamics. Watch again as Ben motions towards the cellos and basses to bring out Beethoven's low, grumbling emotion in this music. We've just discovered a conductor's job is to use physical gestures to help the musicians understand exactly what the composer wanted, how fast to play, what emotion to use, and which instruments are the most important at any given moment. It's a pretty important job, isn't it? Getting all the musicians to think about their music the same way at the same time? Maybe you should try conducting. See what sounds you can create from your silent gestures. Team up with a friend and conduct your own creation. Beethoven did. I'm Richard Vaudry, this is the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, and we'll see you for the next Beethoven Bite.